So uh, let us introduce uh, the, the Japanese uh, staff team and uh, the, the director, Hirabayashi Samu san. So, like, uh, and then uh, Watanabe Takashi. He did the sound, and then also the sound. Quindi cominceremo. So we'll start uh, saying something with the director, Hirabayashi, and then we will go on talking with the, the team of Loiseau. We have the main character, the actress Sandrine Kiberlin. The, uh, the actor Clément Siboni and the director Yves Comment at the center of the table. Maybe I go on in English because I think it's more practical for everybody. Is it okay? Um, there is a strange, uh, unexpected relationship between these two films. Um, there is a secret correspondence between these two films. Uh, not only because in uh, Hirabayashi-san's film uh, we see an animal and we know that uh, this animal uh, has something to do with a big disaster uh, that uh, hit Japan recently, as we know. Uh, but the, and, and then uh, the film of Yves Comont uh, has also an animal presence very important to it. In the two cases, strange enough, even if it seems artificial, uh, animals and animal figures uh, seem to come into our world to uh, tell us or uh, represent disasters and catastrophes, uh, national or individual, that we live through. Uh, I would like to start with a, a Chinese proverb which says the uh, le baton, uh, the, the baton, the baton, the stick, the stick kills the tiger. The tiger eats the bird. The bird eats the insect and the insect eats the wood of the stick. And in this circle, in this circular metaphor, uh, it shows that everything and everybody has a destiny, has a fate. My first question to uh, Hirabayashi-san uh, would be to tell us how he, he imagined this uh, animal character as a, as a sign, not as a symbol, but as a presence about a catastrophe and about a fate uh, that countries or people can experience. There was just a problem in organization, sorry. こちらの2点の映画につきましての関連性、これは偶然ということではありません。それはなぜかというと、両方の映画におきまして、この動物が存在している、動物の存在が非常に強いものがあるということです。平林監督の映画の中には、これは
で代表されている動物、これは日本を攻撃した大災害を象徴するような動物であるということであります、そしてまたイブ・コーモン監督の映画の中にも動物が出てきます。このような動物に、えー<咳>ですけれども、これはやはりこの我々が生きている世界を代表する、世界を表している、表現するようなものであり、その中で起きる災害、これは個人的なものもありますし、そしてまた全国、国中に対する災害というもの、これを表しているわけです。まず、ここでちょっと中国の偶話についてお話をさせていただきたいと思いますけれども、まず、木の棍棒が虎を殺害すると。そしてそのトラというのは鳥を食,いず食,べて食べてしまうと、そして最後に鳥はこの昆虫を食べる、そして昆虫はまた木、要するに昆布を食べるということで、こういった一連のサイクルが構築されるという、そのような中国の偶話がございます、こういう形で、すべての動物が何らかの形で、われわれの運命を表していると、そういうふうに言えるわけです。こここで平林さんにお伺いいしたいことがございますけれどもこの使われた昆虫この場合にはこの場合にはセミになるわけですがこれはどうしてそういうことを思いつかれたのかセミをどうして考えられたのかとこれはただ,ただ単にシンボルということではなくてそのセミの存在ということですねそれが何か運命を表すものかどうかということにつきお伺いしたいと思います。えっと、セミの幼虫というのはあの地面の中に、えー、長い間いてで、えー、外に出てきて、えー、羽を伸ばしてもう1週間ぐらいで死んでしまうという昆虫なんですけれどもあの今回の,あの地震から起きたあの原発の事故によってあの日本の土地がすごく汚染されてしまいましてでその汚染された土地の中に、えー何でもいなければならない動物ということで、えー、本当に今の日本人が置かれている状況をまさに象徴している昆虫だなということで、えー、セミを選びました。うん、well, I chose the cicada because, as we know, it lives before, before being a cicada, it must live for a long time under the ground. And when it becomes a cicada, it has a very short time, less than a week. As you know, after the earthquake, we had also many disasters to the power plant in Fukushima. So we, uh, our ground is so polluted that cicadas that must go on living underground with the polluted ground, the cicada represents our destiny, the destiny of Japanese people. And so uh, this is why we decided a cicada. Don't forget that if you have questions for directors, we are here and they are available to answer. I would like to ask to the director and to their uh, colleagues how they worked about uh, the uh, soundtrack of this film. え、この音響ですね、音についてはどのように考えられたのかお一言お伺いしたいと思います。Good morning, I'm the composer Watanabe. Watanabe. 
First of all, before starting our work of composition of this uh, soundtrack, director said us to face this work as if we were creating something that will be dedicated to uh, Japanese temples. え、and so I thought, and I had the idea to imitate, uh, let's say, the methodology of creating a sound inside Buddhist prayers. And so music start, starts from the Buddhism, being able to create a new uh, sacred music, but starting from Buddhism, Buddhism or Shintoism. Good morning, I'm uh, Ijima Izemoro.効果we used as uh, sound effects, we used above all instruments from uh, food, Japanese food. And first, natoe, for example, that is a uh, Japanese food made with uh, fermented soya, and also Japanese spaghetti, dried uh, Japanese spaghetti, and also cabbage. But above all, in order to have a sense of respect for this food from Japan. えっと、監督に質問なんですが、え、タイトルの well, I would like to ask to the director the meaning of the title 663114. Well, if it is how it is present uh, the, in the cinema, well, 311 is the date of Japanese disaster, but why 4? Well, this I would like to ask to the director. And second question, well, at a certain point after the black rain, there is a black screen. And then it seems to have a new, uh, a newborn cicada, which is the meaning of this scene?日本があの戦争に負けて あの、
Allora, il simbolismo di so questo is six, six è perché is because we have already lived 66 years after uh, the Second World War, and so in this period we uh, have been building our society that was damaged by uh, the uh, event of the 11th, uh, the 11th of March, and four, well, four are the four uh, reactors that was damaged in Fukushima. あの、エンドクレジットのところで黒い雨を降るんですけども、そこはあの、さらに今年から で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、
that is so exceptional uh, that um, we can use him as an inspiration. The only thing that we can do is to show an extract from his work. え、皆さんにとっても儀式のようなものだと思っておりますふうに思っているわけです。そしてまた映画の中で我々の人生というものが語られていくということになるわけですので、非常に興味深いもの。させられる映画だと思っております。この非常に素晴らしい監督であることには全く当然間違いはございません。そして多くのことからインスピレーションを得ているというふうに思っています。ご存知ご存知デビュー。Let's there is a very funny declaration that was made by filmmakers. I like the starting part, the, the taste and the desire of observing and telling about people who were, uh, were close one another one to the other. And is this what you wanted to say at the beginning of the interview? People, people who, were, who lived a disaster and who represent an issue that creates problems. How did you uh, face this problem without being overwhelmed by that? <coughs> Well, let's say about what I said before, well, um, I can say that the film had uh, an issue, a topic, a very strong topic. And so uh, I didn't think it to be necessary to highlight this problem, this disaster, so I tried to I tried to um, look at that event and show them with a sort of softness. So that, uh, well, it is like an architecture. I, I'm, I tried to use the tension between the tone and the situation. I had a sort of tension. Uh, attention uh, going on all film long. Well, about the question of intimidation, it was interesting because a filmmaker uh, is not uh, intimidated by, by his project, but I have the impression that this uh, issue is a sort of engine, a driving force in order to find necessary measures for uh, um, directors and actors and etc. Well, I think it, this is a project uh, I was thinking about uh, before. When I, I thought about it the first time, I was too young to, um, to realize it. Uh, well. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting stronger, but uh, I have to pretend being stronger. And there are things that, uh, that are difficult to me, also from the human point of view. I, I pretend understanding things 
that I cannot um, deeply understand things that, um, that are, are afraid to me. And, and we do not have to be submerged by this. Sandrine, we can say from the film at which point the work is a, a teamwork. In this history, well, which is the nature of this sacrilege made by uh, the main character in this film? What he says about um, about this is it value? It is true also for the actress. Uh, the history was well, this is my question. What? What hit me in the way Eve treated these uh, issues, so hard issues, well, he faced these topics in a particular way. I could talk about uh, respect, the fact not being not wanting to give an explanation that could reduce the dimension in which we are when we are living such a pain a moment in our lives that is uh, so peculiar. So um, it is as if this uh, woman is followed by far away in order not to disturb her during evolution. During and everything was very natural. It was like giving, in, giving just clues, but without uh, saying things. When we have to face such difficult moments in our life, we do not cry when we know about this pain. Maybe it is uh, the next phase, but there are many different things that are happening. It is interesting interesting to talk about a character in such a real way uh, about what they have of unexpected. And so nothing is uh, decided. Character evolves in their lives, facing all moments that, uh, that are present. We cannot talk about um, death, but there are many uh, meetings, many um, possible facts. And we have enough information to understand the life of the character. But we do not want to reduce the will to show such uh, an issue. I think that, above all, at the beginning of this film, we have one of the best portraits of, of loneliness. Sometimes loneliness is just a word, but often we can see uh, some elements representing this without getting the essence of this word, without giving uh, the true sensation of this world. And I think that the audience at the beginning of the film uh, cannot understand what will happen, but they know that something is, is striking the characters, emotions and feelings they live. How did you work together, I think, uh, especially at the beginning? And I think also to some details, some episodes of the film, like the character uh, of, uh, well, the, the daily characters, daily workers, I think ideas are interesting. Uh, are there, are there um, I don't know, notes, or is something that you improvised on the set? There are not dialogues. Everything is written. Well, I, I believe to everything, and so I was I was Anne, I became Anne, because it is logical to me to change into uh, the character being part of it. And I think, I thought this idea to be uh, fully right, and also the originality of the town and of life. 
And I thought that such a, a, an idea was to be realized in order to highlight that moment. I became Anne and I became that character. Uh, and I was uh, looked after by Eve, uh, and Eve looked at Anne, and there was a mixture of personalities. There were, there were no um, different roles. I wanted to represent that woman's um, loneliness, but I wanted to be that woman. I had no justifications. I'm curious to know if uh, how, how do you work, how did you work to the scenes in which Anne speaks with other people? We are lucky to have uh, Clément here in order to uh, listen to him talking about one of my, of my favorite scenes uh, of this film in which there is a clash between the two characters. It is a very lovely scene. I would like to give this example asking where these tensions come from and uh, the place of each character on the set in order to uh, to go to to get to a situation that represents the, the tone of life. I don't know how I worked. It is difficult. I will try to say something. I would like to say that the characters um, are not resembling in the film, while men and women uh, who who Anne meets are, meets are very different from her. There is a confusion. They are like planets that clash, totally different pla planets. So the rhythm of talking, the way of behaving, the way of reflecting about life, culture, what we can drink, eat, or see, they are all um, mixing things. Everyone is changing. So, since there are three main, char main male characters that I wanted to be in my film, I must say that they were very good in acting. I'm not a theoricist of my work, but I must admit that when when they were playing, they seemed to be not care caring about what they were doing. If they were not caring about the, 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 the end of the scene, the destiny of the scene, the screenplay, anything, they didn't care about, uh, about anything but what they had to uh, work about. And this gives a reality to the characters. They exist, they are strong, and they are not interested in, um, in anything else. So I wanted to protect this heterogeneity above all in the scene we were talking about before they do these two characters do not uh, mix they do not imitate each other they are uh, well um, uh, this is can I can say uh, but I'm a humble because it is hard to know how we could uh, really realize this film we can just wonder about it but we cannot give uh, answers Well, two microphones. Well, uh, I don't know what to add. People and well, male characters have an important role in this film. Raphael the is a source of life. He is someone who lives and who is linked to the life. He lives uh, love and is his he is relying on love. Uh, Anne is not. He wants to give love to that girl uh, who is not able to give love. She's she is quite cold, and she was uh, talking about the final scene. And she realizes uh, that she's, she cannot understand her uh, disaster. And it is exactly the image of two planets with uh, two elements that do not touch each other. We cannot uh, be in contact with her. 
we can realize how this girl is caused and how she's trying to find a way out, but all doors are closed. And so uh, she doesn't know what to do. And this is interesting because um, we were not able to uh, find a way towards this girl's heart. And after doing anything, he, he managed to. Well, I, I will not exaggerate, but about main characters and Anne and the central uh, figures and all planets that are a part of a system around Anna's character. There are some inhabitants in this film, some uh, inhabitants of Bordeaux, people you uh, met. Is this a principle that was determined from the beginning because this film happens somewhere and this is a true place, uh, a place that is sometimes even uh, sensual and it, it has uh, characters that are maybe, I don't know, secondary, but I don't like this work this where they belong to the city. Uh, I'm thinking about a plumber, about the, the about agents, about many others. Well, Bordeaux is an extraordinary and mysterious city uh, places. Well, it is the first time I chose exactly a place for my film, a location for my film. And Bordeaux is a very lively city. When we, uh, when we are in a place, the atmosphere influences us. I don't know where, but I wanted to be in Bordeaux. I thought this film to be written for Bordeaux because it is a great city uh, for uh, someone who doesn't want to be seen by everybody. And uh, big cities are perfect for all those who don't want to be noticed by other people. And then in Bordeaux there is water, well, not like Venice, but it is an open-air city. It was interesting being in, in a city with a sensation of grandeur, of freedom. Without putting together different planets, we can notice a presence of water that is very important in the film, for example, the river, the rain, the tide, something that I think audience, well, Asian also audience will notice in a special way, the presence of the element of water that reminds many things in the uh, cinema universe. And uh, the sea in the end, it is a secret plot or a non-secret plot maybe that was written so that characters will uh, work, will intervene next to other characters. Well, yes, it is a secret plot. Or maybe not. I don't know. But when we film scenes, we are changed by scenes. We are we are involved in these scenes, and in this case, water. Well, I had more water than what I thought, uh, because it is like telling about another history. There is water in all images. I wanted to put water in any sense because it is something that flows. Everything is similar. It is like Anne's life. Water is Anne. Uh, something flowing as uh, a state of melting with uh, the elements of nature uh, continues flowing. She is separated by water. She can see water, but she cannot uh, be submerged by water. It is too painful. So uh, there is um, a meeting with the universe through water. But maybe it is a too abstract um, uh, issue to talk about. Uh, 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 are there questions, comments for our team, or compliments? 
And the bird, well, did it, did it eat the insect or not? Now this bird is special. How could you find him? It. This is a savage animal, and we can see it. Uh, it is not uh, dominated by people. Well, the bird. Well, the, the, the bird on the set. What is beautiful with animals is that is that actors. As I said before, actors and animals play in a natural way. Animals do not, uh, do not are not shameful. They are always uh, necked. They have to do nothing with us. So it is a sort of indifference, a mysterious indifference. We give a sense to their actions, but they are natural. The bird is, was on her uh, shoulder, but it wasn't something that was decided. It is a sort of mirror of life. We can see each other through uh, the presence of this bird. The bird doesn't express many things because uh, birds are quite mysterious animals, not, not like, uh, like snakes. Birds cannot be held. They are, they are not human animals in a certain sense, well, just to, to uh, end with. Mikiko, tu veux dire quelque chose? Thank you, Mikiko. Did you want to add something? Japanese well, as far as the language of the cicada is concerned, what I imagine is that uh, it wasn't Japanese, but the language spoken by the cicada represented really what was written on the screen or not. え、逆から読むことで、え、ま、どこの言葉かわからない言葉にしながら、ま、祈り的なものを込めたという、そういうあの作り方にしています。え、あのら、well, the language we used is a totally uh, artificial uh, language because we read uh, a Japanese messages message from the bottom to the beginning. And so uh, this is something that is like a prayer to us. あの、一番あの、いっぱい入ってる言葉がですね。えっと、え、子供たちを救えというメッセージをえ、いっぱい入れてまして、今の日本の置かれ、あの、その福島にいる子供たちが置かれている状況が本当にひどい状況になってますので
Et le bébé